Hi, boys and girls. This is Grandma Sheila with our story for this week. And our story is called Safe. Well, Maggie, she was about 15. And she was just at that age that she loved to go shopping in town with her friends. She liked to giggle and laugh and and do things that teenagers do. And she was doing well in school. So she had dreams for this upcoming summer. Might of fact, she'd gone and she had talked to the local pharmacist to see if she could work in the pharmacy. And you know what? He had agreed and the wages were good for a teenage girl. She couldn't wait. Well, there were other things happening in Maggie's home. Maggie's mother was almost ready to have a new baby. Imagine a new baby. None of the other girls at school had new babies coming to their house. Might have fact, most of the girls, by the time they were in high school, they had little brothers and sisters, but not babies. Well, Maggie was excited about this baby. They hadn't had any babies since Maggie was born. And so she was excited, and she would talk excitedly to her girlfriends about what she was going to do with this new baby. And what she was, how she was going to dress her all up. And it was going to be great fun to have another baby in the house. Well, that baby came just like all babies do. They come on their own time frame. Well, that baby was not a little girl. That baby was a cute little boy, Maggie. She couldn't wait till the baby and mom came home. She would hold him and rock him and she just loved him. It was great to be a big sister. But she still wanted to do all the things she'd ever done with her friends. So you know, Mom would let her go. There was no problem. But one day, when it was almost time for school to be out, Mother came home and she told Maggie, she said, I have really good news. I got a wonderful job down in the office building and it pays wonderfully well. And it will help with you and father. But there's one thing, Maggie. I have to work five days a week if I'm going to take this job. And I don't start till after school's out. So your father and I have decided that while I go to work, because I can make more money than you can, Maggie, that you can stay home and take care of your little brother. Maggie, she was quiet. She couldn't believe what her mother was telling her. She wanted to have a job and be able to go shopping with the other girls during the summer and do all sorts of fun things. And now she would just have to stay home with her baby brother. Well, she said, Mom, are you sure I can make money at the pharmacy? Please, I want a job of my very own. Oh, please, Mom. 
Mother said, you know, I understand, Maggie, but you need to do this to help the family. <sighs> All right, Mom, Maggie said. I'll take care of little Davy. <sighs> well, no more that was said about it because it was a little while till summer came. All of Maggie's friends thought it was fun to come to her house and play with baby Davy. <laughs> but when summertime came, they all had jobs. They had money to spend. They would go shopping together and Maggie would be home taking care of her little brother. Well, she loved him. <sighs> But it almost seemed like a punishment to have to take care of brother. Mother and dad got to go off to work and she had to stay home. Well, one afternoon, she had had her friends over for a while and they were having a good time and she said, well, I, I have some work to do. And would you guys be willing to help me? I thought I'd do something special for my mom and move around the furniture in the nursery. Well, the girls, they said, that kind of sounds like fun. Let's go see what we can do. So they put little Davy in his playpen and he was playing with his toys and they went in the nursery. Well, the crib was over against one of the walls and Maggie said, I think the, the crib should go over there in front of the window. It would look better. And then she moved the dresser to the other wall they moved everything around the chair that Mama Jenly sat in to rock Davy. Everything got moved. And she thought, it just looks wonderful in here. Well, then she went out to pl play games and things with her friends. Well, pretty soon it was time to put Davy down. But you know, Maggie, she kept having these weird thoughts. And the thoughts were saying, put the room back the way it was. And she thought, well, Mama hasn't even seen it. She kept fighting those thoughts. And by now her friends had left. And she thought, why should I put it all back after I worked so hard to make it pretty? But she couldn't shake off that feeling that God or the angels or somebody was telling her to put the furniture back the way it was. She thought, oh, well, it was fun while it lasted. So, before she put the baby to bed, she scooted that crib from over in front of the window and put it back over on the, on the wall. And she moved all the rest of the stuff around. And then she cuddled with Davy for a little bit and he was so sleepy after his bottle, he couldn't stay awake. So she put him in bed and she tucked him in and he was sound asleep. Well, that time was her time to do her own thing. You know, she would go read a book or, you know, she would do something that she knew her mom would want her to do. So she went in the other room and she sat down to read. 
It was so nice to have some time to herself, she thought. Davy was sound asleep. And then Maggie was sitting there reading her book. And all of a sudden, there was the most horrendous noise. Maggie jumped up. She heard something being like glass being broken and she heard wood cracking. A horrible, horrible sound. And then she thought, Davy! And she went running as fast as she could go into the nursery. She scooped up Davy and she held him so tight with all that noise, he was wide awake and crying as loud as he could cry. And right in front of Maggie, there was a truck that had gone through where the window is and the front of it sat right there in the nursery. Maggie couldn't believe it. Somehow that truck, it had missed the curve and it ran right through their yard and hit the front of their house. And then Maggie held little Davy even tighter she went, oh, if I hadn't moved the furniture back, if I hadn't listened to that little voice, Davy, Davy would have been run over by the truck. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You knew that there was a reason why I needed to move that, especially that crib back, you knew, but I didn't. And thank you, thank you so much for pushing me to put the room back, even though I didn't know why. And now, Davy's safe. Boys and girls, remember how we've talked about that little voice that God talks to us through in our mind? Well, I am pretty sure that Maggie heard that voice. And I am so thankful that she listened and it saved her little brother's life. Thank you, boys and girls, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.